Alright, I'm back. What was I talking about? The Dahaka? Alright, so he's big. He's mean. He's chasing you. You have a very limited amount of time to run through the area without him killing you. And with good reactions and good video game sense, you can make make it through without stopping. But you get a little bit of... Uh, uh, try, you a little bit of what do you call it? Um, margin of error. You get a little margin of error by uh, number of rewinds you have before it all takes place. Good thing this tree limb didn't break. So if you have no sand, it's still very possible. It's just uh, harder, and it's just a really intense segment. Like it works really well. From having to go through it fast. Versus not run off cliffs and stuff. Are you for real, Prince? Put your arms out. I really wasn't near the edge of that. <laughs> A similar mechanic is seen in the SAX in Metro Fusion. No audio. Um, you should still be getting audio. Hold on, do I have no audio? Time out. Am I, can I not be heard? Someone confirm that words... words... Someone confirmed to me that my microphone is picking things up. Um, uh, no, it, it's reading like I'm, like I'm talking. What's going on? I should be picking up sound. There's so much <laughs> The Empress will be pleased with you. I'm not here to hurt you. The one I killed are so useful. So useful. Words. Alright. Well, must just be, uh, must be a lot of enemies. You call yourself a buffer. master swordsman? There might be a lot of enemies there, I don't remember. Don't you know? Like a woman. Look how sexual these enemies are. Oh my god. You can just throw them off the edge. I just did that right there. It's not even that hard. Pretty good uh, idea in this area. Toss all the enemies. You don't get sand for an enemy, you feel like that. But, small price to pay. Just get rid of them, it's super easy. I think I'm supposed to be going this way. Where is my destination exactly? Perhaps down there. That's gonna be hard to do. Perhaps down there. It's also gonna be hard to do. I if I came down not this way. I'm gonna try going up this way. Okay, cool. Hi the rock. Normally I have uh, words on stream, chat box on stream, but unfortunately this game is absolutely impossible to the best of my knowledge to play in windowed mode, and I don't have two monitors, and I'm doing something a little bit ghetto to get two monitors. I don't know if I'd call it ghetto. Game audio is louder than you. I wish people would tell me these things faster. Kaboom. How's that? Is that better? We won't really know until it starts making a lot of noise. Does Prince drink so long? 
It's like a bug. It recovers one health bar super fast, and then recovers another health bar super fast. And right at the beginning of the game, you only have the one health bar. And it counts, like, extra health as being a second health bar. So it's like, boom, little pause, boom. And it's like the main health bar, then the secondary health bar. But right now, I only have, like, one and a ninth health bars, basically. And the game's still... up. Oh, hold on. This is it, I think. Prince, run along the wall. Here we go. Dahaka, it has found me here. Things can just sense the damn thing. This thing is creepy. There's yeah, some interesting mechanics with the Dahaka. I'll try and show them off. See that? That's what I was talking about. Margin of error. Here's this room, but in the present. So the Dahaka, as it stands right now, I think only exists in the present. Weapon rack. Usually contain cool shit. Same exact pick. Shouldn't be possible, I already took it in the past. Uh, if I recall correctly, going up here is ideal. Last time I was here was at the present of the past. I've already forgotten. If I remember where all the health upgrades are. Hey, our old friend. Like an infinity symbol. Cannot cross the water. This is certain to come in handy. The Haka hate water. the Dahaka. For now, best I stay alert. It will return. It will it return. Does. It always does. I like how that's just been the prince's method of solving that problem the entire fucking last year of his life. Dahaka shows up, run on walls. I like how he didn't know until now that the Dahaka couldn't enter water. It's like, what was he doing in Persia? There's no walls and shit. And there's a sand wraith. That next. What kind of beast is this? Is that right? <laughs> Later, asshole. So now I'm here in the past. So I might have been here four times. For all I remember. Open up. Uh, is there a side of this I can climb? Actually, no. What do I do right now? Grab this thing. Seems like a good start. Um. Well, that was real classy. Let's grab this thing. Alright, that's better. So 
up, Crooky? How are you doing? You're a frequent visitor to this stream, and I like that. Punctual. I like that. Anyone know that quote? It's a trap area. I feel like I should have gone up here last time. I feel like there's a secret up here. Help me with this. Oh baby. Did I really just fuck that up? That enemy just turned into two enemies? What the hell happened? That attack is whoa. Damn. Damn straight. Prince tells it like it is. Yeah, there's a health upgrade here. This is actually the first health upgrade. I think. It's Wesker. What was Wesker? There we go. So you have to use a sand to even get here. Kind of annoying because uh, you want as many sands as you can possibly have. Oh, that could have gone a lot better, but I get all my health back just from finishing these, so I'm sort of okay with that. It would be nice if I could get on top of this thing. That went about as bad as badly as it could have possibly gone. better to lose health than sand going through these things because you get all your health back at the end but you don't get all your sand back at the end. Spikes are once again trapped. It's not supposed to be like that, I don't know what's up. I'm glad it's not hurting me, I'll say that much. This gate up closes really fast, so you have to slow down to reach it. I don't think I said that at the time. But I just kind of did it right, you know what I mean? Should be able to just make it back over here. I don't know if I can make this fall without taking damage. That actually killed me? Are you fucking for real? Hi, Prince. Appear to have overestimated you somewhat. Now I've got absolutely no sand, so I have to be kind of careful. No sand? Like, there's a lot of instant death traps in this game. That camera angle change was pretty brutal. Um, I'll be fine. These things can... I think they only have weapons. I don't think they ever have sand. Pardon me, Jen. Trust me, your own shadow, Prince. You will never be free of me. Emulation error? No, the... The camera angle change? No, that's just how it works. Aside from good ending, do life grades provide anything from bonus health? No. Yes. Yes, they do. The thing that the life upgrades actually provide that gets you the good... The life upgrades in and of themselves don't give you the good ending. You can get all life upgrades and not get the good ending. If you get every single life upgrade, you get a bonus sword. And the bonus sword gets you the good ending. Oh yeah, emulation error, the spike sticking out. Possibly. And the bonus sword is the best sword in the game, so... It's not the best weapon in the game, though. There are secondary weapons better than your primary weapon. Most of them are secret weapons. For example, there's a hockey stick that you can equip in your offhand. Which shouldn't exist. There's like a long flamingo. A lot of joke weapons in the game. There's a glowing sword, which I'll almost certainly get because it's not out of my way. Pardon me, gents. 
It's kind of hard to make this jump without setting it to make this jump. You can just jump straight across, you don't need to hit that little alcove or anything. But it makes it a little bit easier. These are quite hard to roll under without taking damage. That, however, is quite easy to avoid. And I'm a scrub. Damn it. I'll let it have those hits on me. I earned them. Kind of low on sand and kind of low on health. That doesn't do anything. You have to go here. Um. That was not cool. That's just the backtracking path anyway. Just to stay here. Whoa. Now I've got no sand and very little health. Gonna have to actually be smart. to come down this hallway quite a lot, unfortunately. Not, a, not that much. We're like four or five times in the game for sure. Maybe more. Getting trapped under those doors makes you lose health, but doesn't kill you. And it can toss you out either direction, I think. This is a dangerous place. You should not have come back. I don't have the luxury. I must see the Empress. Impossible. My mission. That sword. It is very urgent. I must see her. You don't understand. When the last grain falls from this hourglass, the Empress will create the sands of time. No business of yours could be more important than that. I have come to stop the Empress from creating the sands. Huh. Then yours is a fool's errand. The creation of the sands was foretold in the timeline. It cannot be stopped. Good communication would stop I a lot of the events in this game. Twice. All I'm asking for is some information. Tell me where the sands will be created. In there. But the room has been sealed. You cannot enter. There must be a way. Ha! You'd have to undo the very fortifications of the castle. The serpent sword, give it to me. Task. When a man is faced with his own death, he finds the impossible less of a barrier. Tell me how. Lip syncing. Very very well. The gate is controlled by an elaborate clockwork system located inside the mechanical tower. Even assuming you can reach the device and activate it, the machine still needs power. As water passes through the moat, the machine will receive power. But first, you'll have to fill the moat from the supply in the garden tower. Activate both towers, and the door will open. If I recall correctly, you can do the towers in either you'll order. This. Serpent sword. It's more than just a weapon. It also serves to activate a system of bridges which will grant you access to the other tower. Curiously, every sword I get after this it can still be used to activate that though. thing. I have to wonder if the prince just hauls the serpent sword around with him everywhere. Or, um, whoa, where's the noise? Or if just all the swords that you get after this point are designed to still work with that thing. Every sword upgrade you get usually upgrades your combos, but all of them upgrade your damage. Yay. Press button three, button three, button three, button three to perform this combo. That's square, 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 square. We got a war now. Do you think there'd be a lot of sand in here? Where is it? I actually don't see it. There's like a room here somewhere. Oh, hello. Oh, well, I don't care. This thing on the ground is cool looking. This might be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this might be the thing that counts the number of health upgrades you have. Because I've got two out of the nine. You have to come here after you get all of them and deliberately pick up the uh, ultimate weapon. If you skip the ultimate weapon, you get the regular ending. The regular ending is fine, honestly. I find that um, I find that the regular ending and the good ending both have their merits. I think that the game treats it, yeah, the game, the sequel treats it as though you got the good ending, though. The game will just um, pretend that you got best end. More of this shit. It's easier to go down than up, though.
that's not what I wanted to do. But it could have been worse. The mechanics of this game were very smartly designed. I particularly like about three quarters of the way through the game, there's something very cool that happens. I have a lot of nice things to say about this game. I like this game a lot. I'm sort of realizing that as I'm playing it. This game did a lot of really incredible things. These inlaid alcoves, you can't climb up them, you can only go down them. You can't, like, jump from here. It's kind of clever, because you can't stand on it. It's easier to time rolling through it as it's coming towards you, but technically speaking, you have more time to run through it as it's going away. These are kind of annoying to get through. It's very difficult to get through them without taking damage. You can run over them, but then you'll you can possibly die from the fall. That's the jump that's kind of gay. So there's four separate settings here. One is the one that initially starts in. Oh, it's not really Oh, never mind. This thing just stays up for good. So I guess only the one has to activate this. Help me with this! Help me with this? That's a weird way to put it. The sword is pretty good. One thing that this game does pretty well is make you feel like you're getting a lot stronger. Each new weapon upgrade. Um, so there's the initial setting, which is the way to that place where I fought Shoddy which I'll only be going back one other time once I get swords that can break doors. And one of the paths is the way to the garden, and one of the paths is the way to the... Um, the way to the clock tower, whatever it is. And the final path, on the surface, the camera makes it think, makes you think that it's the path to the empresses, but you can just jump across this, so it's not super necessary to raise this one. However, it also adjusts a couple things down here, and that's a door that's really easy to miss. It's the fourth, it's the fifth exit to this room. And getting down there is kind of a nightmare. Um, that's not the way. I think it's here where you're supposed to do it. <laughs> This is kind of a neat trick that's usually revealed quite late in each Prince of Persia game. If jumping between two very far away walls, you lose height fast and you get it. Um. Well, that's one thing. Where am I going from here, though? can't jump over there, I don't think. There's no way to go down. This area is tricky. Should I run along this wall? That doesn't seem smart. Looks like I'll just run off the edge. This wall I can't run off at all. Uh, most immediate thing I can do is run over here. And that was fortunately the right decision. Once again, they did quite a good job designing this area. I think I can use this to get back up, but I don't want to get back up. I want to get over there. I don't know if I can make that jump. Or if I'm supposed to. Actually, I did. That didn't feel like the intended way to get here. Let's see if we can find the intended way to get here. That's the way back up. So I guess I was supposed to jump from down there to over here, perhaps. Oh, hold on, we got a little cliff. Yeah, you're supposed to run to the edge of, the, run over the edge of this, and then jump back and forth between these two walls. That's it. Very tricky. Yeah, this is a very secret area. This is one of the most hidden um, health upgrades. I cannot run diagonal on those things. Okay with that. Well, that was simple.
So that's three health upgrades. My health bar is looking pretty good right now. Pretty beefy. There are nine in the game, if I didn't already say. I think I did. See this one? It doesn't move. It is literally impossible to get up this staircase because that thing is in the way until it goes away. So after you get past that point, you have to get the health upgrade, but then again, why wouldn't you? Why would you come down here in the first place if you didn't want the health upgrade? And there's no downside to collecting the health upgrade, so there you go. Just got a message on Steam. So here's the way up. I wonder if an actual human can do that. Probably not. So now I get to pick a direction. I think this is the garden, but I don't recall. Actually, this could be the tower. I just don't remember. Well, oh. There's four pillars, not these four pillars. Actually, maybe those are the four pillars. Where you can jump around on them and that's... Fuck, I don't know, fuck. Whatever. Over here. Hello, item. Prince, please. Ah, oh, fuck. Double bladed ones are trickier. The garden. No. You need to use slow down. Which is real annoying if you come here and you don't have sand. Unfortunately, I have max sand. Last message received. This is bizarre. It's been there for a while. Show some life, guys. Got eight viewers, supposedly. If I recall correctly, this one has a long ass cutscene showing you the door opening. Which is massively annoying because you want to just slow down time. It doesn't. I hope I did that fast enough then. Oh god, oh god, oh god, ride it. Cool. Might as well save. I told my good friend Blomp I was streaming, he's probably here somewhere. Oh, thanks, Crookie. I appreciate that. I'm gonna get lunch at Indian so Buffet, so I don't know how long I'll be. Place to streaming. discover the wonders of hanging gardens. Ours, however, do not provide sanctuary to monsters. Attack him! Do this garden? I don't, I don't like it. Is that the best you have to offer? That's my four hit combo. Now I can do the three hit string followed by the um that didn't kill him. That was funny to say. Hit the tree prince. His auto aim is a bit stupid. I don't like your camera right now either. Don't see him all over the place. Every enemy class has new, like, four weapons that they can possibly be using when they spawn. Yeah. Hello, pro guy. I prefer not to fight you. Once again, there isn't an instance where you have to fight one of those, if I recall correctly. I don't remember which way is the right way to go. I feel like it's the other way. I don't even know if I can make that jump, to be honest. It's kind of far. Ta -da! Okay. I can go up these, if I recall correctly. Maybe not here on this side, probably on the other one. I don't want to go up, though. I'll go this way.
Oh, that was not fucking nothing. Gives me my way back down at least. If I recall correctly, there's a giant chasm somewhere. Or perhaps not yet. I might just be supposed to just go straight through. No, door's shut. This place is a little bit of a maze. Parts of the garden are cool and parts of them are annoying. Parts of the clock tower are cool and parts of them are annoying, but I like the clock tower more. It's not a clock tower, it's just a mechanical tower. No, these are still too far apart to climb. Let's just go this way. I don't think that's easier. Well, I can see how I can. Oh, hold on, hold on. There's a doorway. Vince, that wasn't me. That was you. There we go. I think both directions have two health upgrades each in them. What have I got, three so far? Yes, I love this attack. First time you do an attack, it's often in slow motion. Oh, just down. So I've got three. One was in the hub room and two were... In the entryway, I think. No, one was in the the first, the shoddy path. One was in the hub room. I don't remember. I've already forgotten. Yeah, so here are the gardens. Ta-da. This area is actually hella cool. This is a region I like. If I recall correctly, there's actually a path somewhere down here on the boat. I don't know if that's the path. I don't think you can get down there without dying. <laughs> Notably, um, not here yet. In the next room. Maybe not. I thought there was a destructible wall somewhere. Yet I don't see one. I thought it was right in here. Surprise, motherfucker. Oh, the POV reminds me of a uh, heavenly sword. Now he's already sandy. Look how easy that was. And I get a sword from killing him. This looks like a place where I could easily drop, but it's too far and I'll die. See that down there? That is the path to a health upgrade. I remember that one. That one's quite critically hidden. I thought it was the way you were supposed to go. Because I like, got a little lost here. I was like, oh, I found it. Down here. I'm the king of health upgrades. Region's kind of cool. those. I may need those a lot. Huh? Let's jump across. That's such a basic series. I'm really going down. Now here's the actual... Path. Staying on its right side will be easier. What the fuck? That didn't happen. I should have kept the health loss. I'm just health back, and I won't get back. Stand on the way back up, so it'll be fine. Yeah, 
damn that one, but threw me in the right direction though, so I don't care. become stronger. I don't think that's talking about sword strength, but it actually could be. I wonder if that hurts me if I run into it right now. The health bar looks a little bugged. It faded away. It's like glowing red. Hello, spikes. So for some reason, this one had a massive climb down. I guess to keep in line with the... I don't know how, how accurately they made the maps in this game. For all I know, like, this could all actually fit together pretty well. And maybe they went extra far down just to make sure they weren't, like, treading into their own... elsewhere. Yeah, the health bar's still glitched. It's got, like, a red thing. Whatever. I'm sure it'll function as full. That would be an extremely weird glitch if it didn't function correctly. This game seems like it should have had a very elaborate and effective map system. And it does have a sort of map. Say all the areas I've visited. But it's not really a map. And it just makes you wish it had like a Metroid style map, but it doesn't have one. You just have to remember where everything is. The camera's really working against me right now. There we go. I kind of one-shotted that one enemy. That attack is fucking strong. Oh, I broke my weapon. I was trying to throw it at him. He's no match for me. Yeah, throwing weapon like weapon throwing being an instant kill on same enemies is insanely useful. Especially in hard mode. Your own shadow prince, you will never be free of me. Is that what he said? Pretty cool quote, actually. My health bar is doing some wonky ass shit right now. I really don't want to fight these guys, but at the same time, it's sort of necessary because uh, they throw shit at you. And it's really, really bad to be climbing. Cool. I don't know if throwing attacks do bonus damage to them, or just they're just a very low level enemy. More games need mature video maps, I agree. So let's, let's just do it. So, it looks like I need to slow down time. Yeah. Unless I'm absolutely frame perfect. It'd be really annoying if I didn't have enough sand. Where am I supposed to get more sand? The enemies aren't infinite. Sand isn't infinite. If I fall down too many times, I might just be stuck. I might have to like, leave the area and come back to respawn enemies. That shouldn't happen, though. I like that boat over there. It's a nice looking boat. It might be the boat I eventually take off this island for all I fucking know. Check those Steam messages I got. Shit is one thing. Will is another. If 
I recall correctly, I have to get down from here very quickly. And that door closes in like no time. Yeah. Here. Oh, I understand. I thought you had to slow down time, but I guess you just have to move that block over. That crow guy is probably just like, damn it, dude. Wish I could jump. Wish I had legs. Uh, Prince? Okay. Putting blocks on pressure plates. Pressure plates in general are a very Prince of Persia thing. Is it here? There it is, I see it. I don't remember if there's a health upgrade behind that or what, but I remember, like, I remember having to try and remember to myself that that was there. I think you come back here later anyway. You do a lot of backtracking anyway. Let's get some health. Ah, oh, my health bar is looking normal again. You can't run along walls while you're wet. That was a mechanic in the first game. It's still it's still present in this game, but I don't think it's a factor anywhere. Anyway, I don't remember ever having actual trouble getting here to open this. And I don't remember if it's because I've never bothered to open it and you don't need it. Or if it's because you come back here later and it's not even a thing to get back here. But I remember being really pissed off that it was there because it was like, I'm going to have to remember that's there the whole game. Because I didn't end up getting... You don't get the sword that breaks walls for quite a while. I knew it was going to be a mechanic. Like, once you see a breaking wall, it's just like, okay. In the last Prince of Persia game, there was a sword that broke walls. I think it's mechanic in all three games. So it just creates this expectation. Hey, Lamau. That before too long, you're going to have something that can, uh... I don't know. It kind of, I don't know. I kind of feel like I know going through the game. Like once I see that cracked wall, it's like, well, the game's not even like close to over if I still can't break walls. You know what I mean? Inconspicuous. Door-shaped wall with cracks must be nothing. Do as you are told and kill him. Can be ignoring these guys. Wait, hold on, I need to... It would be easier if they were dead. Alright, you definitely get bonus damage on enemies if you attack them before they move there. Can you kill these crows? Yeah, you can. What's that guy doing? Oh, he's... okay. He was just confused. The basic combo of this game is, like, so useless. I'm sure it's the one that most people do all the time. Oops, my weapon broke. Oh yeah, you can do some cool stuff on an opponent with, uh, if you have no weapon. There's a weapon this, counter. This is not how it's supposed to end. Um... Can I attack me? I have no time for this. I actually don't, though. What the literal fuck is this? You can, like, guard cancel. It's not because I was blocking. This enemy just isn't. He just doesn't, doesn't want to have it. Fall back! Send for reinforcements! God damn. Look at him. So much for countering him. Now my controls are inverted. That's just swell. The undefeated army falls. Um, gotta let all the water through. Must be a normal mode enemy, you know what I mean? I 
I tried prime puzzles right here. Nice catch, Prince. changes. Got a little lost there. I will say that Prince of Persia has extraordinary control. Like the camera angle changes occasionally fuck me up, but like very rarely do I make a mistake. Well I guess I make mistakes quite often. Very rarely is, does the prince make a mistake that I didn't make. For example running off a cliff. <laughs> It's usually I want to do something and then, you know, successfully do it. And that's good for a platformer. I wish they upped the platforming elements of this game and downplayed the combat elements, because I really like the parkour elements. That's not the correct first button. That is not the correct first button. I'm not. So it tells you when you... wait, hold on. That one is. Tells you when you're successful, which means the maximum number of attempts this could take. Wait. Yeah, we're doing it. That's it. Done. Sand. Four tries to find the first one. Three tries to find the second one. Yeah, they went more combat each game, which is kind of a shame. Well, the first one, the first one's the only one that requires you to kill literally every enemy in the game. So that's kind of the most combat, really. It, it would be more accurate to say they improved the combat mechanics dramatically each game. Which doesn't really make it more combat heavy. Because in the second and third game, you can ignore most of the enemies. In the first game, you have to kill them all. You have to kill every single fucking enemy. The enemies, and the mechanics of combat aren't that great in the first game. Every enemy, there are literally two attacks. There's the jump over the head and swing. And there's the uh, um, jump off wall at enemy. Can't do it here. Have to be enemies present. Literally, um, between those two attacks, you could kill every single enemy in the game. And most of them would work on either type of enemy, but there were a couple enemies immune to the jump that were all vulnerable to the wall jump. And there were a couple of the enemies immune to the wall jump that were all vulnerable to the overhead jump. So you could just spam those two attacks and just kill everything. And most and the most of them were one-hit knockdowns. So that was, you know, stupid. Um, but... Uh, Do these enemies? Can they? Can they touch? Hold on. I want to see if. Wanna Attack see. him now! Oh, Damn it. Yeah, those guys can't touch water. Cool. It's kind of neat. They kept all the parkour elements in each game. I didn't even know about the other Prince of Persia game. You know Prince of Persia came out, like the 2007 I think one, that was just called Prince of Persia and it was like a reboot and it sort of uh, toned down the combat a bit and toned up the platforming a bit, but it was kind of really different from these ones and started a different prince. Um, it wasn't even a prince. To my knowledge. I never beat that game, but um, I thought it was pretty good when I played it, but my friend borrowed it and then never returned it, so I've never actually had the opportunity to play it. I should go get it. Um, that's the attack. That's the attack that was super good in the last game. Besides the jump over one. Again. No, it wasn't the movie game. The movie game wasn't a movie game. I passed on that game. Because I thought it was a movie game. Prince of Persia the Forgotten Sands. It's actually a sequel to, um, The Two Thrones. It's literally the same prince, the same timeline. Um, and it's not related to the movie in any way. And I, I passed it because I thought it was related to the movie. I thought it was just a movie game. And, like, I just have this really low expectation of movie games, even though I love Prince of Persia. And that was such a mistake, because I didn't play it until way later. And it was like, wow, this game is actually really good. It's a really good game. I was really surprised. 
It seems like the vegetation has taken its toll on this part of the tower. It's completely overgrown. There's still water here, but um, there's like a giant chasm here, and it's important to not fall into that chasm. Get it like that. Stop. You wouldn't want to fall into that chasm. Put it like that. Pay attention. Yep. Where is it? There it is. There's a hole in the ground. I completely missed the boat on fucking um, Forgotten Sands at the time. I started a file on that game, but my PS3, uh, the fan broke, and then the entire PS3 broke. So, um, I lost my save file. I got, like, halfway through it, I think. I got an achievement for getting, like, halfway through it. That's all I knew. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going exactly. Best to just explore. Could be up there. That is not a thing. I could just leave this way. No, never mind. It's, uh, cracked. Oh, so they had the movie game and then a reboot? No, there's no movie game at all. For, or, I don't think there is. There's Forgotten Sands, but it's not a movie game. I just thought it was a movie game. And the reboot is not related to anything. Just its own standalone game. Well, that's apparently not where I'm supposed to go. I'm confused. Isn't this where I came in? I've already forgotten, to be honest. Pretty sure it is. Let's try climbing on top of this thing. Promising. Ooh. I actually got some life here. But yeah, that's literally what I'm talking about. Just thought it was based on the movie. And then it wasn't. And then fucking... It like blew my mind. I was like, shit, this is like a good game. Yeah, it was part four. It's literally part four of the Prince of Persia trilogy. It's one of those games where it gives you particular actions based on button presses, and then you have to do... Being good at the game is kind of being able to use all of them at the same time. Kind of like Mega Man Zero, where you just have a shit ton of things you can be doing at any given time, and you're kind of supposed to be doing all of them. Or it doesn't like that, perhaps. Definitely a highly skill based game. And it definitely kept the Prince of Persia of parkour and puzzle elements pretty well. Invisible enemies. These are just the uh, annoying female enemy. Oh shit, I forgot. They, they deflect your uh, jump, jump attempts. I really don't want to be fighting all those enemies. If I can get one combo going. It'll hit all enemies in the what do you bother? There we go. There we go. That's fucking most of the problem solved. More like it. Lost a lot of health not to do that. Is that a severed arm? No, it's Oliver. That's a cool looking sword. Michael cool looking sword. Damn, can we get a... Damn, we can't get a good look at that. Alright. So, what are my options right now? It appears to be this way or bust. Actually, overshot. I feel like a lot of people probably didn't play Prince of Birds of Forgotten Sands. To go down. Looks like it. Oh. Oh. 
which I must emphasize very strongly is a damn shame. For God's sense is a midquel. I believe the correct term is interquel. But yeah, that's probably true. I forget. I only remember it's the same timeline. And it features the prince's brother. Who I was not aware existed. He has a name, unlike the actual prince. I think the prince has a name in the movie, but I never actually saw the movie. I'd probably love it. I would probably adore the movie if I ever saw it. It's supposed to be pretty good, just like a Disney movie. It's supposed to be based on the first game, roughly. Perhaps very roughly. It's supposed to feature time travel. It's supposed to feature a wise cracking prince who also has lots and lots of charisma. Like the one in these games. It's more obvious. He always takes the same amount of time to drink. It's more obvious why, if you're missing a ton of health. It's a lovely looking region. I like how, like, it's still the same region, but it's radically changed because of uh, the evergrown plants. But I must say, I enjoy uh, the similarities and shit. Hey, bros. Later. One thing I kind of hate is that if you actually, if you skip the enemies, the music doesn't stop for a long time. Which is kind of annoying, because like, you have no place I don't like fighting enemies. I find, it, I find a lot of the combat in this series to be really tedious, to be completely honest. Like, that, that combo never works on any enemy. They all just block it. I have to wonder why it's even in the fucking game. I must say I like the stealth elements of the sequel a lot. They did sort of try to create a stealth game about this time. Okay, I definitely don't ride out on the boat. That boat, because it's in the past. Probably don't ride out in the past. Um Ta? Alright, cool. Pops all about the park one. I agree. I ought to do some exploring before I do some climbing. I don't think there's any health upgrades here or anything. Alright, I now regret trying to explore very strongly. Oh, you bitch! Excited for Mirror's Edge 2, me too. Even if it's shitty. I'm so excited for it. Well. Bitch, because I was reading off my screen chat. Since that's sort of the thing to say when you see someone playing this game. What's up, my boy Plucky? Did you see from the fact that I was, uh. Um. Busy that I would be streaming? Here's the attack! Here it is! Yes! This attack is broken as fuck. Doesn't kill these level enemies. Not more hit anyway. The point is, you can just keep doing it over and over. And you're like invincible during the battle. You want a car bath? My mom's car is here, so I could use that. My car is currently in shop. So I'm a, I'm a dipshit. Sometimes I make incredibly tiny errors that cost me a lot of money. Where am I going? Can you climb up this? Alright, I'm going this way. I don't care. Okay, this one the right way. Oh, hey, save point. Um. Um. 
Um. Beer? Huh. Uh. That wasn't right. Ah. Uh, perhaps on this tree. Quick jumping mechanic in this game is thankfully very, very forgiving. Or else I would be you dead like no all the time. On this island. I can run across that wall. Is there anything here? Is there any particular reason I should stay? Is there like, did they put like a secret here or anything? Be a great place to hide a secret. You have no place on this island. Look at that! It almost looks like I can fall and land on it. Shit. Imagine how fucking. What if your hand slipped? All right. You have no place on this island. Oh fuck, these move. I was not ready for that. I wait for them to come out. <coughs> you probably run straight through that, but jumping on the trees is a lot safer. What did I miss in my escapade through this room? Have I what? You have no place on this No, I haven't. I don't want to fight these guys. Yeah, I really don't want to fight these guys. Spooky. Um. Ah. Alright, cool. If I recall correctly, this is a hawk duck. The hawk I chase very soon. What the hell just happened? Oh, Prince, come on. There's so much pleasure in pain. Prince. Prince. Alright, cool. I found the right place, but at the wrong time. I'll need to return to the past if I want to activate this tower. The music never notices you skip them. That's what I hate about this game. I love this. I love this. That guy. This is actually quite clever and amusing. Like, they put they put all this build-up to this one crow enemy that is standing in a really inconvenient place that it looks like you're going to have to fucking pick a fight with him. That was not correct. Are supposed to jump based on its shadow? Yeah. Yeah, so you can just see him. Where is he? Standing there. I actually don't see him now. <laughs> you finally got to him. I like a little misdirection there. They show you this enemy that you're never gonna have to fight. Oh. Can't get slowed down for more than a couple seconds or else things get very bad. One thing I really love about this, about these regions, is that you have to go through an area incredibly quickly, and then frequently you have to re-explore it, but more slowly. And you're trying to recall, like, the direction you took to get through here. Kinda clever. Oh, we did it. Alright, let's go back. Oh, damn it. I did it too late. So he talks in this weird, fucking scary, demonic voice. But if you... He's actually speaking in reverse. And if you rewind time after he says something... And just listen. You can hear what he said. Like, the correct way around. Which is kind of cool. 
He actually says shit to you, but you'd like it's an Easter egg that you can actually understand it. All you have to do is rewind time. The Dahaka is really neat. The Dahaka is full of little stuff like that. The design of the Dahaka is basically perfect in my opinion. Gold. Might have did it too early there. That's kind of annoying. Damn it, I want to hear what he had to say. Drink up, Prince. Plucky is AJ in on this, um... Why wasn't your Elena studying broadcast uploaded? What are you talking about? I, uh, never actually had a broadcast where I studied Elena. Like, recently I set my steam my description to studying Elena, but then I never actually streamed while I had that up. Or I hit, like, the stream button one time on accident. And like I didn't even mean to. So I changed it to that and then I changed it to something else without actually studying Elena. Yeah, sorry to disappoint. The studying Elena, it just hasn't happened yet. I'm still going to. I've got a couple of YouTube videos of pro players playing Elena and a couple of tutorials that people wrote about how to play Elena that I'm gonna uh, integrate the best parts into my video. That's gonna happen tomorrow. New Saiyan tank. Or perhaps today. Perhaps the day after tomorrow. Real soon. I have to finish the Elena tutorial before uh, the Ultra update. I don't have to, but I really want to. I'm gonna be pissed off if there's an Elena change in there somewhere. I'm gonna be pissed as fuck if there's an Elena change in there. I'm gonna have to reintegrate it. This enemy's actually, this enemy's actually attacking me. That's not it. There's some way to kill an enemy and take their weapon in the same action. How about those SF5 Ryu combos? I'll, I'll make videos on Street Fighter V once it comes out, better believe. I will be a huge factor in the fucking combo development of that game. Go away, Crow guy. I will be there from day one. I will cause people to like the game. And I guarantee you people won't like the game as soon as it comes out, people will hate it. I seem to indicate that I should go that way, so I think I will. What's over there, though? Whatever. Attack him! Do not let him escape! What's over there, though? What is that over there? There's a button. People are very unreceptive to new fighting games. Street Fighter 4 came out, and it didn't really have any competitors. And Street Fighter, uh, or Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out, and it didn't really have any competitors. But uh, when Street Fighter Cross Tekken came out, a lot of people were just like, why wouldn't I just play Street Fighter 4? It's like the competitor to this game. It's like the same shit. We don't know this cross platform yet, do we? <laughs> Street Fighter Cross Tekken did a million brilliant things to um, make people like the game as soon as it came out. I have my severe doubts that uh, having cross platform play. Justice didn't really get the bin that fast. People still play Injustice more than they play um, uh, Mortal Kombat 9, I think. It's still got a decent tournament scene. It's just um, Injustice uh, it was dropped among Street Fighter players really quickly.
That's just a shortcut back down, so I probably have been doing a little bit of not quite backtracking. Confirmed cross-platform play? That shouldn't be. Should it? Alright, with any luck I'll be able to run along this wall and get over there. Don't kill him yet! I will deal the final blow! Okay, assholes. He's no match for me! Damn it, go away. I'm nearly done with the garden area. Surprise attack, though. I grow tired of this. Lord. Yeah, so this is the same area I've already been through, but I think. Hold on, where am I? Me. Fucking Prince! Are you for real? Do you think that was a good idea? I didn't stop moving before I. Yeah. Pretty sure this is the same area that Ahaka chased me through going the other way. I didn't realize you could turn around on ladders like that. That's a mechanic in the first game as well, and there's one point where you basically need to do it. I didn't realize it was a mechanic until after I got through the area where you need to do it. I like glitched my way through it, kind of amusing. One day I will play that game on stream and I will show you off. It will be hilarious. I remember right when Mortal Kombat 9 came out, that guy, FrameVantage.com, uh, Sebiel Ree, um, like, made a couple of videos with him playing with Damn Die, playing Mortal Kombat 9, and a lot of people, a lot of Street Fighter players who didn't have, who didn't like a lot of the elements of Mortal Kombat, came to like them based on his videos. I was always really impressed with that. It might be kind of hard to go and dig up those videos now. Seb was playing, um, damn it, I didn't remember that. You call yourself a master Seb was playing Sector for some reason. I have no idea what on earth would motivate anyone to play that character. Especially back pre-patch. Um, and damn it, I was playing Raiden, which is pretty cool. Both of those are pretty abnormal characters to pick. Raiden actually was pretty good, but Seb, god damn it. Hold on, I'm getting a call. My car is ready to pick up. Um, I don't want to move that yet. Let's kill all the enemies. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, um, a lot of the things, a lot of the mechanics that made people uncomfortable about Mortal Kombat 9, like uh, combo breakers and stuff like that, they sort of analyzed in a way that was very fair and forgiving. And it made me sort of realize, like I see all the time when people are... Oh, I see all the time when people are like vocally wrong about something on websites. And the thing about that is a lot of people don't talk about I don't have a backup weapon. Okay, cool. The Empress will be pleased. Like a lot of people don't understand something and don't like it instinctively, but don't have damn it, that still hit me. Don't have a profound that cut her in half. Don't have a profound reason to like they haven't posted it, but like Like a lot of people thought gems, for example, were really stupid in uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And I understand that like you might not want to fuck around with gems, but they certainly weren't stupid. Gems are actually a really cool idea. And I didn't think that until I saw someone break them down and analyze them. And after I saw someone break them down and analyze them, I was like, shit. It's a really smart idea. I don't think you can come down here for a long fucking time. You might be able to glitch your way onto the other side. Glitch is the wrong word. Sequence break your way onto the other side. But it's more of a way to come here than a way from to go there. Do you want to get kebab house or like uh, Shanai or what? Lucky. This 
This whole area is kind of clever. I don't remember which way I have to do this. What are the main reasons? Street Fighter Cross Tekken... There are a lot of reasons people didn't like that game. Um... One of the main reasons... Which way is this supposed to go? I'm gonna leave it pointing down. One of the main reasons is it had the worst release of all time. With like the on-disc DLC... Causing a lot of people to go up in arms. With like... There were literally so many... Problems people had that like... It's hard to remember them all. I'm dead serious. I'm trying to think. What were some really stupid things about Cross Second Might when it was released? Let's go up this way. That seems correct. This room is actually quite ingeniously designed. There's like one correct way to do things and figuring it out is kind of fun. So the on-disc DLC, all the characters were almost complete. Um, and they were just sitting there on the disc. I think they were actually complete. With, uh... Uh, what's her face? Jill? Yeah, with Jill, they were complete. Oh, that should be the other way. Jill and Shuma. In, uh, Marvel 3. They were actually fully complete characters. I think it's supposed to go this way. Or they weren't complete. What am I... F I'm distracted. I think Jill wasn't done and Shuma wasn't done. They were on the disc, but fucking... And then there were, like, they, they abandoned the idea to even do DLC characters one by one. Because, uh, I don't remember what happened. Something... They got into some kind of financial crisis. I'm sure there's a way to sequence break your way down there. I'm dead sure of it. Oh, it might have been the earthquake, actually, right? That was right around then. That 2012 giant earthquake in, uh, Japan. I don't know if that's correct. I have my serious doubts, actually. That just doesn't seem correct, you know what I mean? Maybe I was supposed to run along that wall. Jump in the shadow. Oh, there's a rope. Yeah, I think I actually got this facing the right direction. I'm supposed to run out here. A lot of people just didn't like cross stacking because of the time over issues. That was one of the biggest issues. Was that um, the game played... The combos were really long and didn't do much damage. And they cost a lot of meters, so they weren't go worth going for, but a lot of people did them anyway. So people would end up... The thing about Street Fighter, okay? The thing about fighting games is that running the clock becomes a progressively better idea like the closer you get to a time over like if you can get the opponent to low health in Street Fighter 4 and you still have like uh, if you still have like 60% and the opponent has like uh, uh, 20% for example and there's 30 seconds left on the clock it becomes a very real a very realistic idea to try and timer scam them and not a bad idea like a lot of characters do that it's sort of a good idea Sort of a, a, an interesting gameplay decision that you can make, you know, to win by time scanning. It's like it's like a it's like a tactical decision. It's like I I like that that's there. I like that that's an option. But the thing is, like if you get if it's like fifty, like people usually die in Street Fighter Four when there's like forty or fifty seconds left on the clock still, and that varies a lot. Sometimes it's like less than ten seconds. Sometimes it's like still seventy. But it's somewhere in that area. The thing is, Cross Tekken had a health regeneration that was really fast for a tag game, and nothing to like make you lose your red health. So, um, with efficient tagging, you could easily keep your health up pretty high. So most battles, if people weren't trying the timer scam, most battles would end at like 30, 20, 10 seconds remaining. And because so many battles would end at 30, sec 30, 20, or 10 seconds remaining, it was often, like very often, a, g a good idea to try and timer scam someone. Also, fifth health upgrade, yay. 
it was a very realistic decision to make in like every single match. And sometimes you would get combos where they would cost three bars and they would do like 400 damage, which is nothing in that game. Um, damage in that game is actually pretty high. You would have these long combos uh, that would do like no damage. Oh, I made it. Cool. But they would run like 10 seconds of the clock. How do I get back? Oh, I see. No? That's not it. Oh, I get it. I get it. I'm with it. I understand. I get onto this thing and then jump over to the wall. Prince. Alright, that one was me. I'll accept, I'll accept fault for that one, Prince. There we go. Now I'm with it. Yeah, I like timer scams a lot as well. But like, timer scam, a game that's based around timer scams, that's not a good thing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and gems would have increased the damage output quite a lot if people used them. But there was an immediate push in tournaments to ban all gems or anything except preset combos once they made the preset combos. And um, that really slowed down the game because there were no like, there were no power gems, there were no meter gems, and there were no uh, speed gems increasing the offensive potential of the game. But the thing is, it wasn't... Look at me pushing that enemy. It wasn't actually that close to a timer scam. That's the really interesting thing about it. It almost wasn't a timer scam themed game. It's just like... Like, if you... It's it's so easy to become a timer scam themed game on accident. You're always, like, just a little bit away from a timer scam themed game. Like, Street Fighter 4, if the clock... If the clock took as long to get to 30 seconds as it takes to get to 50 seconds, there would be a lot more time overs. But a lot of people were just like, slow down the clock. Or, speed up the clock, slow down the clock. And that wasn't a good solution at all. That didn't, that didn't fix the problem that the game was ultimately very slow and boring. So, in the Street Fighter Cross Strike in 2013, they decided not to slow down the clock, and instead improve the mix-up potential of the game, and also decrease the length of the combos. It was like, increased damage, fucking decreased combo length. And it ended up being pretty good, but a lot of people didn't play it. Uh, I should be facing the exact class opposite direction. This should be it. This should be the solution to the puzzle. I'm getting water currents going down now. Cross Tekken at release was not a great game, but it was an acceptable game. But a lot of people didn't give it credit. Cross Tekken 2013 improved a lot of the problems that Cross Tekken had. forcing me to look at that chest and I can't even pick it up. Yeah, a lot of the combos, like Xiao Yu would juggle you six times with her fucking stupid... Uh, I don't remember what it was. That one's for she had. Raven would juggle you six times with his crutch fierce. Lei would bounce you off the wall six... Lei still bounces you off the wall six times. There's no excuse for Lei. The combos would just take a shit ton of time off the clock. Whoa, close. Let's throw this guy. Damn it. There's a way to grab people. I don't remember what it is. Dude, like, I've ar I did it on actual. I hate these enemies. Well, this is great. This is excellent. I like this. Oh, that was beautiful. I should just be able to run across this as long as I don't run into that fucking buzzsaw. Yeah, that worked.
Excuse me, gents. Attack him! Should be a, uh, let him escape! A, teleport, a time portal right over here. I think. Are you fucking goddamn it, Prince? I have no time for this. Prince echoing my fucking sentiments. I don't like the What's the hole? I don't remember. Oof. Kinda sad there's new whole new set of Street Fighter eyes Tekken characters and probably never gonna see the light of day again. I say that all the time. Especially because some of them have incredibly Stop good designs. It. Especially I think Ravens is really good. I would love to play like a good Street Fighter game. Not that Street Fighter Cross Tekken isn't bad, but it's got no future. I would love to play a good Street Fighter game with Raven, like a spiritual successor to Raven. The launching crouch fierce is awesome. It's I like it way more than uh like the Urian style, uh, Seth style, Abel style, Crouch Fierce launch. Um, that's just a really cool gameplay mechanic. Now, now I need to get down, and I, that, I think I have to do it by going the way I went initially. Yeah, now it's showing me that way. I always follow the camera, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The way back is a lot faster than the way here. I have to work my ass off to get out here. Oh, fuck this why. I like the way that the charge attack worked with the crouch fierce. Because you could make it safe ish with that. And you could make it so um uh you could loop with it. And that was just really clever. Or you could just do it like, uh, like ch cancel to the wind wind edge or whatever it's called. The quarter circle back punch. Just cancel into that and then hold it a little bit to make sure it comboed. Yeah, I like the Tekken characters too in terms of design, but I really wish they bring back all the characters from Cross Tekken spiritually. That would be so cool. Tekken Cross Street Fighter is... I don't know if it's going to be popular, but it's not cancelled. I trust Harada to actually release that game. I'm surprised it's taken this long. It's looking like it's going to be like a PS4 game. The thing is, they decided to make it after both Tekken 7 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Kind of two really strange decisions. Rise up, Prince. Let us continue this. Can I please? Okay, there's a letter. Prince Y. That's one of the areas of the game, the garden. So it's like do two areas, then fucking meet the Empress of Time. And then after that, it's like, do two more areas. It's like the same two areas, but you get to revisit them and things are highly different. So you kinda, you come back to the garden later, and you come back to the tower later. And then I think it's just end game. These are the regular enemies, these guys are a joke now. Actually, they're no more of a joke than last time. I think I'm fixing to get a new sword. I think they're about to become even more of a joke. I think every time you return to this room, you get a new sword. Oh, it's you. You seem surprised to see me. Surprised only that you insist on prolonging the inevitable. Why did you help me? I don't know. I guess half because you remind me of the Empress, or who I wish she could be. What do you mean? Like you, she knows her own fate. She has seen it in the timeline. But where you fight it, she has submitted. She accepts I feel like this game telegraphs its plot twist too much. But I say it is a poison. I guessed it. Knowing the date and manner of her own death torments her. I feel like they should have called the Empress an Emperor until you met her. You wish she would fight her fate like I feel like me? it would be better if it was like meet Maybe the Emperor of Time. Give her something to live for. And then it's you like surprise it's an Empress. I feel like that would work What's better. The other half? 
I have known my whole life that what is written in the timeline cannot be changed. Yet something inside me wants you to succeed. And do you think I will? No. But I admire you for trying. Thank you. Your name. I haven't even asked your name. I've been so... It's... Kylina. The hourglass is more than half empty. You should go. You what the haven't hell? much time. I like how bizarre that was where it just interrupted a cutscene with another cutscene. Lion Sword. Unleash energy for devastating attacks. That's the command to break doors in the last game. And you could use that to break doors. But you can't actually break doors yet. I will not tell you the twist, but you could logic it out from everything I've just said so far. I just know that chick has gigantic knockers. You're not wrong. That is not the way up. Imagine if I killed myself in front of Kylina just like that. Can you talk to her? Doorbell just rang. Hold on, I've got to get that. Doorbell never rings. What's up? Here I am. When's lunch? Pretty much whenever you want. What happened to the chick from the first one? Did they just James Bondify her? <laughs> James Bondify. Does that mean uh, totally imply a, a relationship and then completely abandon it for no no reason? Because yeah, that's pretty much what happened. It's not stated in this game, but it's brought up again in the sequel. Um, the prince is just a hard man to love when he's being chased by a Dahaka. That's the... the beginning and end of it. How do you get out there? I actually don't know. Let's look from over here just in case this will give me a new perspective on things. If you want to know the actual... Mm, I don't remember if it's a spoiler. What happens about uh, uh, Farah? Basically, she knows who he is, but like a, lo a large part of the last game didn't happen. Don't forget about that. Most of his relationship with Farah did not occur. Because, like, he rewound it all at the end. So, like... They don't have the relationship that they had at the end of the last game, but she does know who he is. And she does find him incredibly probably interesting and mysterious. But, um... Ah, oh, damn it. 
These things are really easy to get past if you're using slow time. If he had sex with her, which he might have, it happened during uh, a scene that never happened. There's a scene where it is heavily implied that they have sex. Rewind harem. I questioned that at the end of the first game, and I was like, how many times did he rape her? Okay, I didn't say that. That's kind of fucked up. Actually, I think I did say that. But I said it in a jocular manner. these enemies. Lion sword. Yeah, two hits. One hit with the last hit of the combo. And they don't block. That's fun. There's a way somewhere near here to get a health upgrade. I don't remember where. I feel like you have to keep going down, but... I don't see a way to go down. Pardon me. <laughs> Damn, one shot. Is. is this where that enemy is? I remember this. Jocular about right. Pretty much. Comedy is tragedy plus time. Really just tragic. That's the end of it. I swear I remember there being a health upgrade around here. actual area where I have to kill all the enemies. I'm really glad I went the other way first. The big man! This enemy is quite annoying to fight unless you slow down time in which he's quite easy to fight. These enemies are a real bitch in fucking hard mode, I'll tell you that. You gotta stab them in the back of the legs since they're only in the er, older area. And eventually they tip over and you can climb on its back. And then you have to hit it on the head. A lot of people just hit it until it throws them off. Which is what I just did and it was dumb. And it can just throw you off the edge, so you can that can be a one-hit KO. You have to rewind time. Um, but the way you're actually supposed to do it is hit it a couple times and then dodge. Find the side that it attacks you from and dodge on that side. Yeah, fuck. I did it way too early. It's not too hard. It gives you plenty of time to react. But it's kind of hard after a fucking rewind. Because you can't tell what he's doing. Like that. Oh, I got him. That's how you're supposed to fight those guys. They're pretty annoying in um, hard mode. That was hilarious. That being said, the idea of killing an enemy much larger than me is, has always been very badass. Cannot shake feeling. I'm missing a pop upgrade. I'll be back. I'll find it. I'm not gonna get through the game without finding all health upgrades. It's just a bitch to miss one, you know? This upcoming room is the most annoying room in the game by a generous margin. It's just in general very long and difficult and it's also very buggy. You can grab things when you're not supposed to grab them and render your game oh, 1337. Render your game uncompletable. On dead serious. Such a large also these things are kind of it's just a bitch to jump through. Tower some 
you need the sand, and it's like if you fuck it up, you have to rewind, and then you need an another tank of sand. Oh, the exploding dogs. They're not really dogs, but I don't really know what they are. I guess they're sort of more like frogs than anything else. These enemies are such a joke that it's like... It's kind of underwhelming to come through here. This might be a destructible door. It appears that you can go through it. I think I see shit on the other end. So sometimes when the, a wall is destructible, you can use an exploding enemy to kill it. To open it. And sometimes you just have to use your exploding weapon. Exploding weapon, your uh, breaking weapon. I think the way you're actually supposed to go through here is on these things. I will show off the part of the game where the game becomes literally unwinnable if you do it wrong. It's not yet. Basically, you've got to activate something that like you're not supposed to be able to activate. Be real fast about this. I think it's easier if you slow down time, but I really hate slowing down time. Yeah, I got it. Not too much trouble. It's kind of clever. Kind of move this thing around based on where you need it. Kind of fun. This tower is just awesome. I love the environment, in theory. This is the thing. This is it right here. Yeah. It's when they're red. That's how it works. If you hit them while they're red, they explode. And if you hit them while they're red and they hit the other enemies, they can explode the other enemies. If you're dodging though, you generally won't take damage even if you dodge without really getting away from them. Which is nice. Anyway, this thing. Just grab it right now and it pulls. And you need to do that to raise this thing. And then, like, now you can jump and you won't grab it. Like, it just won't work. Like, this, is like, this thing is like permanently deactivated for the rest of the game. But you can kind of run onto that and then grab it. And then it'll grab again and pull down again. And there's a point later in the game where I couldn't figure out the way down. And I was just kind of fucking around. Because um, it was hard, you know? And I fucking... That thing was at the bottom again. Because there's something you do later in the game that puts it at the bottom somehow. And then I, like, ran onto this and pulled it down. And it that thing, that thing in the center rose up again. And it was impossible to ever get to sink down to the ground again. And I could not... Like, you couldn't continue... If this thing was at the level that it was at. And I literally just rendered my game uncompletable. Damn it. That's not good at all. Pardon me, dog. It just exploded. I forgot they did that. They'll just explode with time regardless. You can't jump through there. I thought that enemy didn't see me. Uh, I guess I gotta go along like this. I feel like if you had to sneak past him, that would be kind of cool, but, like, literally, this guy's stupid. There's no reward for sneaking past him. And, uh, he won't notice you anyway, regardless. And he's, like, fucking a cinch anyway. It's like they could have made something kind of cool there. That wouldn't have even been that cool. It kind of would have just been tedious. But still, I'm kind of, like, upset. A lost opportunity. These things are fucking narrow, Prince. <laughs> this thing is kind of cool. I don't think there are that many of them in the game. Might even be the only one. I like it though. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, 
that reverses direction. You actually need that going in two different directions depending on which way you're going around it. It's kind of cool that you can do that. It's another kind of cool thing. I think this is the only one of these in the game. Just gotta ride it. Oh, I forgot about that guy. You've gotta run and swing. That's the, the way to kill it, but you can just throw a weapon at it. And I missed. Yeah, running and swinging is pretty hard. Oh, shit. Um... I'll accept that. I, sw I swung too early. that are explosive blow up immediately. That's why. But that didn't work. Thankfully during a lot of the animations of this game, like it has long, I guess pretty animations for a lot of the things you can do, like tumbling and stuff. And fortunately when you're hit during those, you frequently take full damage but don't get hit out of them. Especially during attack strings. Sort of convenient. would be really annoying if you had to um if you could get like hit out of out of certain things and just killed like instantly. Well this room looks like hell. I think you just jump across this. Yeah. Not too bad. Um well perhaps I climb on top of the door. Um, Prince. Camera angle had me hitting a weird direction to get through that. The save point. This is the save point that I damned myself at because I I activated that room in a weird way and then I couldn't figure out what to do, so I went back to the save point. And going to the save point and saving guaranteed that I would never ever be able to finish the game. And that is where my first run through of this game ended. I think I can throw these guys off this ledge. Maybe not. Just kill them the old-fashioned way. Got a pretty good weapon. You should have bled when you had the chance. How did this happen? I'm probably spinning that glitch all the time now. Cool, a sickle. I don't think sickles have ever actually been weapons. Same with sides. Damn it, dude. Just tall. They're just gardening things. Sort of metaphorical. This has a scythe. He's, uh, he's calling him. Oh shit. That's a lot of damage. He swings with both weapons, it's kinda cool. That one blow is enough to kill that guy from full health. I don't know if the sickle is strong or it's just uh, powered up with my new sword. That combo does more damage. Hey, the sand ray. I see you, asshole. I'm gonna kick you. What do you want from me? Later, Sandra. I guess sure is mysterious. Yeah, there's no such thing as mysterious. 
I hope I don't need a dog to open a door. Oh, fuck. Where am I? What is this? Shouldn't I be going the way that, like... Like this spot? Can't think of when a scythe would have been used as a weapon. Yeah, where the hell does this go? I don't think this is a health upgrade. It does look like a massive chore to get through. Gotta tumble under this thing. This could easily just be like a... I honestly don't remember what's over here. <gasps> Cheap. Well. New artwork. That's what's behind there. Damn it, dude. Taking all the damage. There's water in the next room, so I'm not even afraid. I can just drink it. Good enough for me. thing. Beth, what are you hungry? Let me go get my car and then I'll pick you up since that's right in the same area. And let me save at the next save point I find. You can run through this one without uh, slowing down time, but it's annoying. This appears to be a destroyable wall, but it's not. Oh, no sand. Let's try that again. Still no sand. I think it's randomized. I don't know. I don't know if it's randomized or not. Usually you get a little bit. Oh. Usually you get one or two out of every three barrels. It could easily be random though. Uh, Prince. again, two ways to go. Oh, this is just where the sand wraith pulled the lever. Can I pull it? No. Perhaps I will be able to eventually. What do you want from me? Hey, oh no. Once again, these enemies are annoying, and this time I don't have a lot of health. So I really need to not fuck up repeatedly. So one thing that makes these guys easier is to slow down time once you get on their backs. So it gives you dramatically more hits in the same amount of time. And it also lets you react easier to which side they're going to be on. In normal mode you get so many hits before they even act that you can just kill them, I guess. That's sort of the strat to killing those guys efficiently. You really need strats like that sometimes. Can I please have some sand? Good lord. The game being so stingy with it. None? Are we for real? Did I really open every barrel in a room and not get a single thing of sand? There's actually two ways to go here. Because there's up there, which sort of looks correct. And then there's also over here. Which I don't remember where that leads. It also kind of looks correct. Let's go this way first. Well, that didn't do anything for me. This might be a return only journey. Yeah, because I can't do anything to get to that rope from here. But I can definitely get to here from that rope. So it looks like this is for returning. 
There's a fucking piece of sand wasted when I already don't have a lot. No health, no sand. And there's a dog. Alright, Prince, come on. Thank you. So there's the health issue done. Water is just an instant full heal, that's just really useful. I mean, there's not a whole lot of water in the game. But like, god damn it, that isn't helpful. It was just a table with fucking like food and drink on it. Who here eats? These are all like sand monsters. <laughs> sand monsters eat? Like, who is this for? I broke it. Those attacks. You need certain kinds of attacks in order to kill people. For example, like stabbing them when they're on the ground. Are you fucking for real game? I know it's not difficulty based because I've beaten this game on. Shit. I've beaten this game on the harder difficulties. Harder difficulty. Singular. And there's an equal amount of, uh, or there's quite a lot of sand in that. As much as there is an easy anyway. So that one is literally, you can't get over it without a little bit of help while running or jumping off one of those <coughs> things. Oof. Is that a time portal over there? It's a good place to stop. My friends are hungry. I'm a little hungry myself. I don't know if I'm hungry enough to justify Indian buffet, but whatever. Done streaming. I can quit the game.